are live. Hey, everybody. Look who I get to hang out with. Jim Brewer. What the hell? How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. This is a cool, you know how long I've been waiting? I can't believe I've never met you. I know. I can't believe I never met you neither. No, and I was dying to meet you my whole life. My whole life. I've run into oh, cool. everyone cool. but you. So this was, uh, yeah, man, I love you. I oh, love thank you. you. You're so nice. Thank you. You're Let's funnier than hell. What's thank that? You. I, I said, you're, you're funnier than hell. Well, sometimes. I've loved you for a really long time, too. How old were you when you first saw me? Um, I think I'm going to say, I want to say late eighties, um, on either, were you on the danger field specials? Yeah. I played his wife. That was a big honor. How old were you though? Uh, I'm going to say I was about 17, 18, somewhere around uh -huh. there, somewhere like mid late oh. teens. And then, oh. and then once you, once you were on the show, I was really hopped up, and that was a huge part of our household. That was huge. That was uh, oh, cool. Yeah, it was me, my dad, my mom. So it was, and oh, then cool. But I always followed you, just in stand-up wise. I watched the whole madness go down. <laughs> I was all hopped up. I was all hopped up when you were coming back. I watched the first episode and laughed my ass off. And I said, oh, this is going to be the you. greatest. This is going to be the greatest show that this is going to crush. It's got every element of what we're all living at right now. You were living my life. The, my, I was taking care of my parents. My, my mom's an independent living. My father's got dementia. I'm, I'm wiping oh, no. his ass every two minutes. He drops deuces. I'm like, this oh. was it. So... I've been following you a long time. I hope they don't geek you out, but I'm just being honest. No, it's very nice of you. Thank you. So your dad's got dementia? Well, they're gone now, but they did. Yeah, oh. you know. Oh, what a horrible thing. My mom's boyfriend had it. It was awful. Well, you know, we also, like, I, I would have fun with it, though. I really, <laughs> I would. Like, me and the kids, we <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you, you'd have to. I mean, uh, every night I made him watch. He loved he loved the Mets, and I swear to God, every night I'd come in like, the Mets are in the playoffs. You want to watch them? And I would repeat. Oh. I would play the 86 World Series, and I'd come oh. in. I mean, this is like six weeks straight. You'd be like, yeah, it's the seventh <laughs> inning. I don't know if they're going to pull this one out. Like, holy oh. shit, this is 40. But... As long as they're smiling, it was all good, man. I took advantage of that. Oh, that's so sweet a thing to do. So he was like always happy with the Mets every night. <laughs> yeah, we would, we would decorate sweet. them and wheel them around the neighborhood. I'd make my kids decorate them, put wig on them, put makeup on them. I swear to God. And we'd roll around the neighborhood, and he was filthy. He was a really filthy person. So he was embarrassing. It was. Uh, <laughs> Oh, poor dad. It was bad, but I freaking love That's why I can't wait to get older. I can't wait to get you older. Think, why? I'm old. Christ, I don't know. Yeah, but you're allowed to say what you you know, you, you. That's true. You hit a You point. have a certain, well, sometimes, I think. Not always. Yeah, like, are you, you're like, you called your kid. We can talk about this, right? You called it what you called your kid today? What you oh, called yeah. Jake Harold? Oh, well, I did. I said nicer things to him since you were witnessing. But usually, wait, 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 my wait, son. Wait, like, so, um, are we allowed to say that here, or like people freak out? What? Can we speak? What? Do we want to speak? Or? Yeah, everybody hates me already, so I'm sure they hate you too because you say shit. Go well, ahead, say whatever you want. Yeah, no, but they got so pissed at me. He cracked me up because he said my mom called me retarded. And I yeah. belly laughed because <laughs> that's what we called everyone growing up. And I still, and I tell people, I'm, I call my kids retarded and they flip yeah. out. Like you can't, you know, you can't see the R because 
my friend's cousin. I'm like, I don't give a shit. It's what I grew up with. Right. It's not like uh, that's that's just the way we talked. Yeah, it's just Instead the way we talk. We don't mean people with Down syndrome. No, we don't mean no, them. We that, mean listen, idiots. That's, right, like that's what that's what you're gonna wear today. You can't wear that. You look retarded. Just, no, you're not doing it. You yeah, it doesn't mean, mean what they say it means. I call my sons dick tards. In fact, I call all men dictard because they're like dictarded, you know. They can't do nothing if it don't if it don't be centered, you know. You know what I mean? No, but it's true. Yes. But wait, wait. So now, <laughs> come here, you dictard. What the fuck you doing? I dictard? only say that when I'm mad. If I'm being nice, I you know just call them the N word. Well, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, I say I say retarded all the time. We went away. We went away. Uh, my wife and I. We we now start to get away once in a while, and then uh, so we'll we'll leave the three of them alone with directions on how to take care of the cat and the one with the diabetes and the the dementia right. cat. And you got to feed him and shove the pill down the throat. And then, but can we leave you? You know, can we leave you for four days while well, me and mom try to find her sanity? Come back, fucking punch holes in the walls. I get I said, they do? Yeah, the youngest one punches fucking holes. I said, seriously. Oh, no. I said, you're retarded? Are you fucking retarded? If you're pissed, you go walk outside. You don't punch doors. So... I made her go get a new door. Uh, she's plastering that shit up. She's cutting it up. She ain't allowed a house, and she did it. But the point is, when I'm pissed, I call them retarded. I can't help it, and I curse. I f bomb like crazy. Oh, you mean around your kids? Oh, I got a bad mouth. I do around. too. But I do shows, too. So I what? To, I don't say. I very rarely would curse at a show. But I yeah, I noticed you work pretty clean. Yeah, like I just, I used to, and then I'm not a good writer. I'm, I'm definitely not a good writer. I'm, I'm, um, I'm just, a, I, I'm a glorified storyteller. So I'll, I just tell a story. I'm terrible at, at doing that stuff. But I don't know. Years ago, when the kids were starting to, uh, they would go on the internet, and they're, they piss me off. They're you know, I had this lady go, like, you're really, you're really blue. I'd love to bring my kids, but you're blue. I'm like, we you I'm fucking, what, have you ever seen me do stand up? Am I talking about dark stuff? Right? Like, no, but you, you know, you, you, you're blue. And even though it pissed me off, I started looking at all my stand up, and it wasn't that I cursed a lot. It was more, I didn't have any jokes. I was one of those, you know, when you do that, it's, fucking crazy and shit and shit and fucking you know what i mean and i i just bet it's it sounded terrible coming out of me although it sounds great when i'm pissed off but yeah so i just started doing that and then it actually i thought it forced me to just try uh, to find funnier words yeah. uh -huh. and i yeah. don't know if i'm better it's or not but yeah yeah, it's easier. It's easier to be dirty for sure, huh? Because you know you get a laugh when you say and, and so fuck it. You know you can get a laugh. <laughs> you know, but it is harder to like, you know, be be clean. It's way harder. Well, it doesn't matter. Where do where do you live? Where are you? I live in I live in Hawaii. And when did you start? With the hair, I think you look, you look like you've zened out. Did you zen out? What does that mean, smoke pot? No, you smoke pot. Well, there's the smoke of pot. Then after the smoke of pot, it's sitting at the leaves and talking to the sun. It's just like, I've given everything away. I got the, you, you, you look vibrant. Your hair's great. You look like a. Well, I got a lot of wigs. My real hair is like real ratty old lady hair. So I got a lot of wigs, 
but I do do a lot of farming and pulling up weeds and all that. You know, I live on a farm and I do all that kind of vegetabilizing the world for uh, so, my fellow humans. So, so I do do you, all that stuff. When you do that, do you get, is that where you get all, like, uh, like for instance, my wife, this year during the summer, she would spend all day, I mean, all day in the yard, just gardening, blah, blah, blah. And she'd come back just like she went to church or something, or she went to God heaven, where it was the most, I, I've never seen her so peaceful in my life. Where oh I yeah, I think so. Yeah, you get in there in the dirt, you get your toes and your fingers in the dirt. Yeah, it's transcendental for sure. You know, uh, cause you know you're at source, and you know you stop all the crazy thinking about how am I going to do this, and I got to get out there and do the. You know, it's just like you, you just really center, and you're at source. And I love pulling weeds because I think all these assholes in Hollywood and that's their fucking throat, you know, and I'm just grabbing them, <laughs> pulling out of the, at the roots, you know, and a fucking like mass murderer. It, it's really peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> I love all that you're all into all the conspiracy theories shit. I love that shit. Oh my God. You're well, right there with all that stuff with me too. Well, I always say, listen, you, you're a, you're clearly a deep thinker. It's not even, yeah. um, you know, if you take away the word conspiracy and you just replace it with thought, yeah, no that's kidding. all they did. They changed mm -hmm. to stop you from thinking you throw right. in the word mm -hmm. conspiracy and then right. immediately it's discredited. So yep. if, if you, if you and I are talking now, I've never met you. You never met me. You don't know anything about me. Some of the clips we've seen and you know, your career and all that. But now me and you are talking about, don't you think it's weird that I don't know the, 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 this happened and that happened. You're like, yeah, exactly. And then, so we both created conspiracies that are exactly the same in our heads. I mean, yeah. it's, um, It's it's a thought process that that some it's people putting just two and fucking two together. I think hello, it's four. I, you know, I think it's common sense. Yeah, I do it's too. It's common sense. You're not allowed to have common sense. No, it's against the fucking law to have common sense. And so, God damn so it. what is that? Te it it's so frustrating when I try to explain to someone. I go, okay. So you don't think it's weird that the government will say uh, six feet safe, five feet danger, um, uh, 9 p.m. Uh, at the bar safe, 10 p.m. bad. Uh, <laughs> um, nine people in the house, mm, acceptable. 10, pushing the limit. 11, gonna have to rest you. Are you fucking out of your mind. Well, right. it's for the, I, I can't tell you how sad and discouraging, like I, I know most of humanity don't think whatsoever. Yeah, I think but, that it's right, right on. I think they don't neither. But it's, I'll use the word startling. Yeah. How many people, we're, we are in, I, I, I feel like I'm in a movie 24 seven. I'm literally watching zombies walking around, you know, uh, racist, white supremacist, white supremacist, uh, sexist, uh, 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 COVID, COVID. Uh, it's, it's, I've never seen anything like this in my life. I feel like I never I, seen this, nothing this like is it the matrix. It is. It is total. And I think Trump is Neo and he's busting out of that son of a bitch. I think he's busting it all open. Do you? I, I think he's, I think, um, this is what I said. My whole life, Roseanne, I never, I always thought politics was professional wrestling. 
Mm -hmm. If you really think it's well, it largely so, is. It is so, largely. You know, in the past, you say this side believes that we yeah. should just let anyone in here. Should we let them in? No, 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 no. How are we doing on the merchandise? Are we doing all right? Um, right. And then the others, but they all have dinner together and they go, you Yeah, no shit. They all golf. Yeah, you play this guy and we'll play this. And then we'll mm -hmm. say, You can't do this. And then we'll say, No, you should do this. And then we'll rile yeah. them all up. All right. So. Mm -hmm. And then we'll However, ask them, to, then we'll, they'll, we'll send them 25,000 emails a week that say, you got to help us defeat the other side. Send us 10 bucks. Send that every three days. They're just fundraising off our fear. You know? Exactly. Exactly. So. Right. But when he came along, my hand God, this is, this is, I don't know anything about politics. I don't know anything about politics. Um, my common sense said, like, I would ask my friends, and you know, I grew up very blue collar. Uh, yeah. And so, and they all go, we're voting for Trump. I said, why? Because I just saw a reality star still. And they mm -hmm. said, you got it. Because he's not a politician and he can't be bought off. And you should hear the things he's saying at these debates. I'm like, ah. I don't know. So then it happened. But not until, you know, there was a, the march, the women's march. And I said, well, what, yeah. what are they, am I missing something? Like, did he show up with dogs from house to house going, there will be no more voting for women. You, you must have your left breast taken off. Like, what, what am I missing? What did I? Yeah. And people start screaming, we're losing our rights. We're losing our what rights? What do you, what just happened? And then, and then when I try to get them out. Yeah. I went, I went something. Mm, usually the ones, usually the ones screaming and finger pointing and they keep coming up with nothing. Those are the ones you got to keep a real close eye on. And you know, yeah, I spent time. You know, my first my first TV show was in Harlem, and I would go there every day. And I, I'm not gonna lie, I was scared to death. And the more I just showed respect, yeah, it's how you act. The amount of respect I got back, and it was a beautiful time. But what I noticed was. And when I lived and some of the friends I made there, the conditions that they were living in, I'd say, why, why would you, like, how come you don't leave? Like, well, you know, the more, the more, you know, the government gives us this and the government gives us that. If we have, if we have this, this, and this, we get more and more. And so, you know, what's, what's the incentive? And way back then is when I realized, oh my God. And then I would look down the street and I got Lily trying to kill. You got fast food, fast food, cigarettes, cigarettes, fast food, cigarettes, cigarettes, uh, guns, dump the guns, dump the, uh, I'm getting too far out there. But the point is. No, I follow. All you got to do is go to Pelosi's uh, district and see everybody's living on the street in tents. Can I tell you <laughs> two years ago, I went there because it's yeah. one of my favorite cities in the world. Swear to God, um, I'm going to do some show. It was during, it was July, two years ago, I want to say. And by day two, I've been going there for years. It, it Yeah, me too. I don't know. I don't know how that happened so quick. I, I saw, people shitting uh -huh. against the wall. I saw people injecting needles. I saw a guy yeah. screaming at these horrified little Asian family, like screaming and following them. And I, by, by day yeah. two, I was, I, I swear to God, I was so depressed. I, I ran a car and I had to drive to a beach and I just clicked the closest beach and I just sat 
and I sat the dock all day because I wasn't so much, I wasn't so much sad and disgusted at the situation. What I see is the people are keeping them there mm -hmm. and creating this. No one's holding them accountable. No. Nobody. And mm -mm. in a mastermind way, they just, it's like a voodoo chick. Like, you cannot get us. We yep. control more than you can ever imagine. But yep. I, it is that. I, I do believe. I, and I'm praying to God. And again, I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. Yeah, I'm I mean, just a either. guy. I'm just a guy that prays to God. There's, there's, there's someone really looking out. And I don't know what, what fascinated me about Donald Trump was I used to have a radio show, right? It was called Bruin Least on Satellite Radio. And our big thing, long before the start, our big thing and was called No News on this radio show and No Pop Culture. We call that the slave world. No news. Then we had our own little gimmicks. They'd call in. They're like, hey, did you hear that Britney Spears? Boom. We hang out. And then the callers go, yeah. he's banned for, you know, you no know, pop star. What's the rule? You know. So, and I would try to, we would, we would show lessons in a funny manner because people don't like getting too deep. They don't like hearing you're being cheated on. They don't like hearing that the people, yeah. they, it's just, it's too much for them. You know that you've talked to yeah. some of your friends that go, tell me what so-and-so is like and go, okay, well, if you want the truth, you're not going to like the whole ending. Here. Although I know it's, uh, you're still going to watch so-and-so's movies. Um, yeah. and they still will look at you like, oh, you're, you're, you must be jealous. And that's why. Yeah. But when ah. he started, I'm getting all over the place, but you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. People can't handle reality. And so no. when he started, this is what I, this is what I started praying when he got my attention. In three to four years, whether you hate this guy or not, he has woken up yeah. a lot of people. Because mm -hmm. what you do hear from not just here, around the world, fake news, fake mm -hmm. news, mm -hmm. fake news. And when mm -hmm. that was first, when, when I first started and they were getting caught. Mm -hmm. First time you started seeing him getting caught. Uh, here's a clip yeah. from Italy, but ABC said they're sorry for the yeah. little clip that was from Italy pretending all these people were in the hospital. People don't remember it though. We just keep moving that the, the, the right. gang, the mob just keeps through. But I remember it. Yeah. You know, I remember the uh the myth. There's something so big going on right now. Yeah, I'm really big. And yeah, so really, really big. And my friend, you know, I go, yeah. Uh remember when right right during COVID too, you just gotta pay attention. In the middle of it, it was it, it was absolutely bizarre. The military, the military guy came to the podium. He's like, uh, we just uh, saved the girl. Uh in I remember room. that. Yep, I remember. And he goes, he goes, um, he goes, we have our, we have sent our uh, ships to South America and the Caribbean. We will not be infiltrated. We will use that all force. And we are a United States of America. And we will defend our honor and this and that. And then Trump came on. He said, we just, should, you know, I saved someone, a girl from terrible conditions. And then I think, are we not gonna lie? Excuse me, why did you wear the mask? We, you, you were just doing a whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Are you really they call, to they pull wipe this that? Trip? Yeah, they you wipe it. This voodoo, you might have pulled that voodoo trip on your little zombies. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of us that saw that loud and come mm -hmm. like, Yeah, we did. Thing. Did you see and it on the internet where know. they said it? Did you see it on uh, the internet? I saw it for two days because I'm like you, me and you, we're, we're, we see things alike, I think. Well, I think all comics do because I, I talk to all, you know, a lot of comics and they, they see stuff too. But for two days they were talking about it and then it was a wipe. You know, uh, you know my one friend, Linda Paris, she has a, a thing on here, uh, uh, Deplorable McAllister. She does a, a podcast all the time, but... She said the job of the news is to hide the news, you know, the yes. fake news. It hides the real news. So they did a wipe of that after they did that whole thing. And, but for two days right after, they were talking about saying it was uh, Natalie Holloway, that that's who they found. Did you hear that? No. Yeah. And then it was a wipe. And then it was the COVID. Yeah, that's what I heard. And then another good one was not a good one but mm -hmm. when that freaking nuclear bomb goes off in beirut yeah it blows a mile long uh -huh. and they and they ask him he's like yeah no i'd say that was an attack from my sources and then within seconds it's not even acknowledged. It was fireworks. Mm -hmm. It was fireworks. What? Fireworks. Well, I'm telling you what, on this island, they put out a uh, an alert because all our neighbors got it. And uh, I didn't happen to be here at the time. But uh, all our neighbors got an alert that an atomic bomb had hit the big island of Hawaii. And my neighbors were kissing their kids goodbye and trying to put their kids under the beds because they thought that was the last time they were going to see them. And then, was you know, that the, 20 minutes, was that the 20 minutes later, they came the on and, yeah. 20 minutes later, they came on and said, oh, false alarm. But in that 20 mil minutes, I mean, all these parents and their little children had had, you know, thought their lives were over. And they, and they just wiped that too. And they said they said it was a helicopter and they show this big rocket going off and then they said it was a helicopter wow and i yeah. almost and i and listen i also find it interesting that all these troops are home and coming home we haven't invaded anyone there's been no wars yeah he stopped now, all the all military that shit. Yeah, huh? they're all pissed. They're all pissed. Well, a lot of them are pissed. Did you see that one picture of him with all them generals behind the Resolute desk? And then they just showed it a week or so ago. They're all gone, all them generals that, you know, like like to get in a lot of wars. He got rid of all that. He drained that swamp. And now it's like, yeah, we're going to have our people at home. You know, first of all, because we need them here. And second of all, because we have got no business being in 50, 157 countries. We got no business with that. And he's with our tax money. And he said that. Yeah. He said we're over there fighting wars. Like we, we what are we doing over there? Why we've been yeah. he said what we've all been saying forever, but we don't do anything about it. Right. We don't do anything. We've been programmed too long. Programmed yeah, too long. For a really long time. But you and I can Here's why about. I know the election is fraudulent. And I said this this morning. I know it's a fraudulent election. You don't need to count no votes and all the dominions and this and that. It's a fraudulent election just on the idea that, you know, this is bullshit, that the majority of voters voted for live birth abortion. I don't think so. Right? I think. I, I and. I think this is, was a full blown, I hope. It was, it was the third or fourth coup, the fourth coup against yes, Trump. Yes, but don't you think that 
by now? Like, th what I was talking about before, now think about it. Years and years and years, whatever the news said, whatever they said, you'd believe it 100%. You would never question news and they knew they had and we never did we never believed it i mean we were hippies you know i'm a little older than you but we were hippies we never believed a fucking thing the news said because they were on there every night telling us how great the war in vietnam was we knew it was bullshit way back then right this isn't shocking to us right. old folk you know we never believed it well that's and i always thought like you look at that that generation it's Okay, we're going to war. Um, you have no choice unless you go to college and mm -hmm. you do our programs. Uh, yeah. Then you're safe. And for the rest of you, drugs for everyone. We're going to numb yeah. you and trip you out. Yeah. Woo! And then we're going to make you look like idiots. Bunch of hippie drug addicts, drop yeah. out, low lives living around in these camps where they give crabs to one another <laughs> disgusting while the women have hair in their armpits and just, <laughs> just uh, look at them look at them it yeah. was all true too <laughs> <laughs> there was about what? 15 of us living in one house with one bathtub you know, we, we were making about 50 cents an hour working, uh, washing dishes. I washed dishes for about 14 hours a day for 50 cents a friggin' hour. And, uh, you know, made $50 a week. And so you had to live with 11 other people. But, well, you know, that's how it was. Yeah, my, my oldest sister, God rest her soul, <clears throat> she was um, completely in that era. Mm -hmm. She was a hippie till the day she passed away. And I, I remember, so I was five years old. So this is like, now we're looking at 1973. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of coming towards the end, but she's still, my brother had long hair and straight hair. And, um, she let, I loved her. Like she, she looked at, she was seven to 16 years old. I was five years old and she really looked after me. She probably stoned him high half the time, but still I had a, I had a deep connection with her. And I remember, I remember her leaving. I'm like, Patty, where are you going? She's like, Jimba, going crazy. I'm like, where, <laughs> where is that? She goes, I'll be back, but I need to go, I need to go to crazy. And she was gone for months months i remember my mom freaking out trying to figure out where she was and oh she, no she came back she blonde had an afro <laughs> and my mom flipped because she had a nose ring i mean my mom flipped you didn't have nose <laughs> rings in 74 76 and i'm pretty sure she got some other stuff which i don't need her kids right i know for a fact she did because <laughs> i remember watching my, i was six years old like why are you screaming at patty i was like you bring this home he's fucking watching you he's six years old his goddamn sister has a fucking <laughs> nose ring patty <laughs> and we had, and we had <laughs> We had Chinese landlords and they were like, yeah, what's going on? What's going on? Oh my God. It's fucking great. She was a full blown hippie, man. It's fucking great. Hey, clean the fucking toilet. Hey, clean the, the sheets. You disgust it. Oh my God. It's great. It was great. Where'd you grow up? What town did you grow Long up? Island and, and I grew up in Long Island. I was, it was on the border of Long Island and Queens. And then ah. I, I remember too, my sister, the first music I was into was Jimi Hendrix oh, and, yeah. and Credence. And, cool. and she would do this and she would go, Jimbo, you can tell she's totally high. She's like, Jimbo, she's playing incense. This is all coming <laughs> back to me now as I'm talking. <laughs> she'd, go, she'd go, Jimbo, 
you want to dance foxy lady? And I would put on, a, I'd be like five years old. I was fat too. I was like a hundred. No, I was, I was 85. I was 85 pounds in kindergarten. Swear to God. Fat. Oh, that's fat. That's Woo. fat. It's a fat kid. Yeah. So I would dance the foxy. And I'd wait for it to come, come and Jimbo. It's Kimbo. Ooh, foxy lady. That and rolling down the river. Rolling, rolling. I, so yeah, I lived in a hippie house, but I didn't know they were hippies. <laughs> How'd you tell me about when you got picked up for Saturday Night Live? I want to hear about that. Was that traumatic? What was that like? Here's what it was. Yeah. This is this is this is what happened. Okay. How old were you, first of all? I was twenty, maybe I was. 30, so 95, I can't do math. Um, yeah. It was 95. So uh -huh. 95, I get it. But by then, I hated Hollywood. Uh -huh. I hated Hollywood with a vicious uh -huh. foam at the mouth. And... Uh -huh. I mean, I went from I went, I went from Long Island family morals, you know, all for one, one for all, look after each other, to this demonic, <laughs> disturbing, soulless cesspool. Yeah. yeah. Of uh -huh. fucking nasty, evil. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you real quick. And I want to say this, I've been dying to say this. One of the things that I've always really, really, really watched you was the way they treated you when you had your show. Oh, on. they, they treated me like shit. Oh, they try to paint you as a bitch and this and blah, 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 blah. And I could just tell your soul was being fucking Yeah, ripped. they try to kill me. Yeah, they did. Oh, I, I know they did. And and you were you were too brilliant. You they couldn't keep it. She's not sticking to the rules, Charlie. It's oh true. my God, you it's drove all me true. crazy. I love it. Oh my so, God, <laughs> fucking scum, scumbag, motherfuckers. <laughs> well, we can be on for another seven hours talking about that. Um, so, S aren't they yeah. evil? Though I'm so glad you said that. Fucking, they'll 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 just as soon stab you right in the eyeball if they get an extra dime, uh, or extra airtime. Yeah, or, right. Or steal something, right. steal an right, idea. Exactly. Oh yeah, uh, they love that one. When they fired me, I said, "What the fuck's Hollywood going to do now?" Because I'm not there to steal ideas from. There's not there's not going to be no TV. If I ain't in Hollywood, who the fuck are they going to steal from? Because I look at TV and like, you know, pretty much not everything, but a fucking whole shitload of it shit they stole from me. Every pitch I went to, they go, oh, we, we're going to already do a show just like that. You know, every fucking, <laughs> <laughs> every fucking time. You know, oh my God, every time I heard that, that's interesting. Um, aren't we developing... We have that one thing. Yeah. It's interesting you say that. And isn't so yeah. and so attached to it? Right. Yeah, no, so and so exactly. is already attached. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing a show about a you know a uh, a dog with one leg that uh, is psychic too. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. Wow, Zan, that great minds think alike. We were uh, we we were just developing that. Um, wow, yeah. that's funny. You know, CBS is well, like I want to talk to you about Saturday Night Live if how right. dirty you'll get on that shit. So here's what happened. Okay. Now, when I, God, where did it start? So the guys that got me on was this guy called, uh, uh, this comedian, Fred Wolf. Oh, I, Fred I, Wolf. yeah, I got him the job. I got him his job on there. Fred pushed and was a, a, a big help. And I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I, I don't, I'm just, yeah, whatever. 
So Fred, Fred got me on. Um, it, it took a couple meetings. Uh-huh. It took a lot of things. I, I don't want to. Sometimes I wonder if Lauren is like the, uh, I'm not going to give this all this. So here's yeah, what happened. Okay. Here's... okay. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is weird when you show up at places and they all sit and they go, how did you leave off with Lauren? Like, does that determine my future here? Or like what? Oh, wow. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, so the good news is I did leave off good and, but I was miserable, man. After Fred was gone, I swear to God, it was him and this guy, Steve Korn. And, um, they came up to me and they said, we're out of here. Uh, this one's going to Seinfeld and I'm going to start writing movies for uh, David Spade and blah, blah, blah. That's what he said. And he goes, Jimmy B, good luck. You're fucked. I said, what, what does that mean? He goes, oh, you know, so-and-so can't stand you. Like you, you this is not going to be fun for you after this. And I really didn't understand what they meant. And I found out real quick and I called a person out a couple of times. It's dead. It's no, it's no, uh, but I, I learned just, just the malice, mm. the, I, yeah. yeah, I saw, you know, I'll tell you what, can I get heavy for a second? Sure. I love it. Um, a lot of things, but when I would see, one of the things that was very, very devastating, this is just for me and not anyone else. And I'm not trying to make this about me, but uh, Far Farley came to host, right? No, and I didn't really, you know, I was good friends with him. Okay. I did not know that, but he comes on the host and everyone, when I say everyone, I, I didn't watch the shows. I didn't, I didn't see the movies. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't start watching Sunday live until I was on it. And then I, Oh, wow. Yeah. So he made me, which is another, I fucked that up. We're, we're at the big press conference, big press conference. And they give this whole thing. And, uh, I went, I auditioned and I don't think Lauren wanted me at first because the network was shoving me down his throat. I learned all this as time went on. It was some, uh, and at the press conference, they, they go, uh, Jim Brewer, are you from New York? And this must have been a dream growing up, watch Sound Night Live, and now here you are on it. And I just innocently said, I never watched the show. And I, <laughs> 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 and that's exactly what norm mcdonald did he went and i didn't know that was such a bad that was a bad answer um oh yeah all right <laughs> but so <laughs> when he came on you know what I really liked was, uh, you know, I, I, I would talk to the camera guys and the grip guys. And the, yeah, I they were all cool. Out I, they I were all so cool. And so yeah. they all said, from the clothing people to the haircut people and, and the camera guys. So I'll never forget, the, the, the main camera guy goes, Jimmy, Jimmy, you're going to love Chris, boy. Oh, uh, what a great, so Jimbo. You're gonna you you have a good week. You're gonna love you you Chris. You guys are gonna hit off. You, you guys are like. And then I go to the um, you know where they cut your hair, and they're like, oh, yeah. Chris was. They would say Chris would. I, I'll never forget this. Like Chris, you know, during his off time, he'd go to his local church and he'd he go help them, you know, the homeless or whatever. He'd go help yeah. the church and 
wow. So he comes on and the first day you got to do uh, you know, you come around, you meet everyone. I'm super stoked. And I'm also, I'm also living and chasing the dream still. So yeah. even though I got morals, I'm still a whore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to whore myself to get there. Can I just touch the star? I'm still there. Yeah. So he comes in and he goes, I know you guys. This is the part. I know you guys got something. So I I offer the one hitter, right? On the pot? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's all I've ever done. I, I don't go. Yeah. So he takes, he takes the one hitters. Oh, and then the other person I'm with, I don't need to name him. Uh, he's he's like, I got I got this for you. And it was a drink, and he one swig. Oh one shit! Swig. Okay. About half oh, hour shit. later, we're in Lauren's office, and um, he's he's no, no. like twitching, and oh, I'm looking. No going and I'm, and I'm looking at the other person like that's that can't be oh, from no. what the oh, fuck no. is going on and yeah. afterwards one of the producers came up um i always had a good relationship with her she was hard on a lot of people uh marcy and she came in the room and she's like yeah do not he's gonna try calling you now do not, do not. And if Marcy mm -hmm. said anything, I was like, hey, no problem. No problem. Yeah, I loved Marcy, yeah. I, I did too. And Marcy, because she was very, she was very good to me. She was very, even when I mm -hmm. made mistakes, she was the first one to go, Yeah. I need to talk to you. And she, yeah. she'd give me the finger, but yeah. I understood she was coming from a, a higher place and a place right. I didn't understand. So yeah. I always respected that about her. And, um, and a lot of people did there, I have to say. Yeah. She said, he's in a lot of trouble. Mm. So the second night, when you're supposed to write all night, yeah. um, I would see the nurse following him around. Oh, sure. Why, why, is, why is the nurse following him around? And then I saw Chris Rock and I don't know Chris very well. You know, I think he's a brilliant com uh, comedian. Um, I said, what are you doing here? And he said, I'm here just in case. Mm. And mm. I, and then later on that night, uh, the door knocked and I, in my, in my uh, office and I opened it up and I, when I tell you, I don't know how any way of describing on my kids' lives, it was the sense of just pure evil, pure evil. And it was a, it was a woman and she just walked in the room and she, she looked at me. I never saw anything like it. And then she sat on the couch. She, it was almost slow motion. And then, and then he came in and sat down at the chair and he said that's my friend shut the door boom and you know started doing what he did i i i walked out of the office and i went down the hall i said he's he's uh he, he's he's and they said yeah we know it's really bad but the part that i i cried that night Because I went home to my wife. I said, D, nobody cares. Mm -hmm. Right. They're willing to try to kill him. Yeah. To say, or nobody's, no one's willing to say this ain't worth it. Yeah. Not his management, not the television show, not any of his. I Friends. did. Huh? Uh, so you know, I did. I did. I went to Lorne.
I, I went to Lauren and I said, you, you got to fire him off the show because the only thing in the world he cares about is the show. So please fire him till he goes and gets straight and don't let him come back. Even if he tells you he's straight, don't let him come back till he's really straight. And um, he said, okay. And it was three weeks. I said, three weeks, three weeks ain't enough. He'll straighten up so, just so he can come back and he'll do it again. Please, please, he's going to die. <clears throat> so I did. And I did that for a lot of people too, because I'm not a Satanist. <laughs> I'm not a Satanist. Well, you know what I mean? I'll, t I'll tell you this, Roseanne. And then. And they all go, oh, you're a nosy bitch. You're a nosy bitch. You're trying to fuck with other people's jobs. But, you know, I did love him. And I did watch him, like, before he went on stage. He had to lick everything in the room. Did you know that about him, Chris? <laughs> he was so fucking nutty. He had to lick everything. I go, you're lying. You don't lick everything. He goes, yeah, I do. I go, you got to show me. And he goes, no, I don't. I'm ashamed. I go, oh, come on, man. You know how crazy I am. You just got to let me see that you lick it. He goes, okay. So he did. And I watched him. I was roaring. How? You're even going to lick the fucking chair? You fucking nut. <laughs> but he did. He, he just had a lot of goofs up there, but uh, that's why he needed the drugs to pull it together. But he couldn't figure out how not to do that yet. But he needed that isolation and discipline so he could figure out how to get through them, you know. But no, he was so great that they just wanted the great. They didn't want the life. You know, they didn't want yeah, the life. You know, I will say, I don't think anyone made me belly, belly laugh harder. I mean hard and that that show i'll never forget he did the you know the axel foley uh the axel foley and it was it was uh it was a workout one now <laughs> some of the girls when we did the dress show some people were like ew you know he's, he's being gross or whatever and i know he kind of heard it so he waited he waited till he went to air. Uh -huh. And one of the things, he, now we're all on a bicycle. If you ever watch this repeat, all right, watch the repeat. You'll see me. You'll see, I can't, I can't stop smiling and try not to laugh. So I'm on the bicycle and the girls are next to me. The one, one that made a comment and he, he goes, oh, yeah, you know, the first thing you gotta do is uh, <laughs> get your fix of caffeine. Now we're live. And he goes with the caffeine oh. and he goes, and then he goes, <laughs> I mean, drenched their face, their outfits. And, and then they, they, he wasn't supposed to do that. I knew he was like, you want to laugh at me? Oh. <laughs> I and it crushed and i howled he was a he was a mad you there's no way you were beating him on screen and for a second i actually thought no I was way beat him on screen i thought i was going to because during the dress show one of the sketches i kind of got the big laugh and i went i'm gonna get a bigger laugh than chris Farley. Yeah. but little did i know little 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 toy Jim Brewer, the rookie yeah. of, of this great presence, literally waited to live to just, he just murdered. Yeah, would, he would, did that to me too. Out. I thought I had him. I thought I had him on this other show where I had him guest star and I thought I had him. I, I, I really wanted to get him, you know. I wanted to get the bigger laugh because I thought, you know, he's great, but he's young and fuck it. I deserve it. You know, I got all that <laughs> shit in my head. <laughs> I got it all going. I'm like, I'll show him who's a uh, big mama here. And uh, <laughs> he turned around and it was one word. He's like, oh, and it was just, I go, ha, I lost it. Because it was like, Ooh, this monster came out in one word. And I knew it was like, I was shit, just a pile of shit. <laughs> God, yeah. he was so he, great. That presence, I never saw nobody else with that presence. I never no, had I seen nothing like it. No. 
I don't think so. I, I don't think so either. I think uh, stand up wise, I don't know if you look well before you even go. Uh, I'm all over the place. You asked me about SNL. And so he was he, he was the beginning of me starting to and then I couldn't get on and blah, blah, blah. I was so miserable. So miserable. I started smoking pot like crazy, nonstop, nonstop, just to numb myself. And my yeah. wife, who I learned over the years, she's the only one mm -hmm. that would be brutally truthful and just harsh and blunt. And it would piss oh, me off. That's good to have. Yeah. Yeah. It's and good it to have that. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh -huh. But I got to, I, I grew to really, really respect that on levels I can never be thankful enough for. And she yeah. says to me, she goes, she says, you come home, you bitch that this one took your sketch. You bitch that this one can't stay. You bitch that the head writer, this and this and it quit. I want, uh -huh. are you serious? Is there something wrong with you? You don't just <laughs> quit. I'm peaking. I, I just finished filming the movie. <laughs> I'm in the third year. They're making a doll after me. You don't quit. She goes, you said you would never be in a job that made you a miserable human being like X, Y, and Z. Uh -huh. You said this about this person and this person. Yeah, Look what yeah. it did to that person. Well, guess what? Uh -huh. You're that person. Oh, quit. wow. Your wife's a hero. Good for her, man. And Did you quit? I asked to quit. Uh -huh. And they put me on a hold. Oh, God. It was the first time they didn't extend my contract. They put me on a hold through the summer. Uh -huh. And I will say, and this was a great one, too. I got a call because I had a really good friend that worked for the network. And he really, really was a big fan and he always tried to develop stuff and mm -hmm. big ally, big fan, great guy. He called me up. Oh, this is right before she asked me to quit. Um, he goes, Jim, what, what, what happened this year between you and so-and-so and so-and-so? Mm -hmm. Oh, why? They're doing everything in their power to get you off the show. Really? It's like everything. He goes, if I tell if you say that I said this, I can get fired. Mm -hmm. Don't repeat this, but I'm telling you this name, which made all the sense in the world, and mm -hmm. this name, mm -hmm. they're they're trying to get you off. Now I started fighting towards the last couple of shows. I started pushing back because I did feel things were being taken from me. I know they were. I'm not stupid. I'm mm -hmm. not stupid when a when a head writer comes in your office at three in the morning and says, uh, it's chewing on the pencil. Hey, man, uh, I just, uh, because we're connected to all the computers, I see the sketch you're doing. Um, we're, I'm, we're working on the same exact thing and trust yeah. me, most likely ours is going to get in. So, uh, but I do uh -huh. like the ending. Is it cool if we just use the ending? Yeah. Uh -huh. And this is the guy that's going in and picking things. What are you supposed to, it's like, yeah. it's like a cop coming to your door. We, uh, no, don't use that. He, he, yeah. That's, that's how bully. they do. Yeah. So, that's how they do. So towards the end, I had enough and my wife saw it. My yeah. wife caught them red handed with a situation. And she's like, you know what? I'm really disappointed so and so is like that, but I'm so glad I saw them in person. She was like, shame on you. And at that night, I remember it was uh it was Matthew Broderick. I knew it was gonna be, I knew this was the big Matthew Broderick was there. And um they were trying to switch sketches at the last second, a monologue. Yeah, they always do that. And and Matthew Broderick is like, what? And I, the, the one which it killed. Why are we gonna? 
And this guy was just fighting. It was just the ego. I'm fighting ego. I'm fighting ego. And he came down 10 minutes before the show. He goes, you're not doing the opening, and, and we're not doing that. And I went, does Lorne know? Because, yeah, no, we'll tell him. I went, no, fuck that. I'm walking with you, and I, I, I get to talk to him, too. And he was like, no, 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 d -d -d that's not going. I'm like, no, fuck that. I'm going in the room with you. And I knew right that second. Yeah. Right that second. Yeah, that's how they do. And so, um, so then they won. And then my wife's like, just quit. Just quit. And then Lauren called me. I called one of the guys. I called him out. And he's like, oh, no, not me. We're not trying to get rid yeah. of you. We're trying to get rid of Catan. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's not what I heard. He's like, no, yeah. no, boo-boo, no, baby. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, they're bullshit. And Lauren, Lauren said, Jim, why don't you go to, why don't you go to dinner with so-and-so or give him a call? And I knew so-and-so. I, I knew all about him already. This wasn't going to work. And so Lauren, I have to say, goes, you know, Jim, and I quote, you're too nice for this business. If you ever need oh, a yeah. producer, give me a call. I said, thank you. Well, Lauren. that's a nice way to end it. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. That is a cool way. Yeah. So as ways go, that's the way it goes. Um, At least they didn't fire you and ruin you like they did Norm. Can you believe that what was, they did to Norm? Well, they did it to a lot of women, too. They did it to a lot of women comics, like Janine and a whole bunch of women. Norm was you know? um, Norm was another one that I learned from. He <laughs> God, Norm is goes, great. Ain't he great? Well, all right, I'll tell you a story. This is great. Oh, boy, my favorite Norm that story. Same, wait a minute. That same... Oh. This is great. This is fucking great. Um, so it's my, it's that, remember the press conference I was telling you about? And I, I yeah. did the whole right away, you know, like, Jim, and they uh -huh. prepped us for an hour and they're putting certain clothes on us and I got to be the, the, the good looking guy that's quiet. I guess that's, that's what I, the role I'm going to be playing. And, and Norm, <laughs> first Norm's smoking a cigarette as the, and Marcy's going, Norm, put the fucking cigarettes like, and that done yet and I, 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 yeah yeah so i'm <laughs> i'm looking at him going oh yeah he's gonna get fired he's gonna get you can't you gotta put this out like that's the that's one of the producers so i say my thing i never watched the show uh spade <laughs> cracks up spade goes hey, 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 hey. norm's like yeah I ain't gonna like this guy. That's what he said. I ain't gonna like this guy. Then I fuck up again. They and they give me a second chance. Warren Littlefield gives me a second chance. Head of NBC goes, Jim. Uh, well, uh, surely when you got older, uh, and and uh -huh. you watched it. That's what he said. When you got older and you watched the show after being a kid and i again i innocently i went i was out on saturday nights i wasn't in watching tv and norm's like yeah oh my guys guys fucking great but i i wasn't trying to be funny i was really that stupid i really was that <laughs> stupid and so rosanna I swear my life in my head I'm, going, <laughs> oh, I'm, fucking, I'm fired i'm i'm fucking fired I just, I pissed Lauren off. The, the, these headlines are going to be all over. He's never watched TV. He doesn't watch the show, blah, blah, blah. And they ask, and, the, and I'm numb for about 10 minutes. And they're asking all the new people, they ask Will Farrell and Sherry Ote. And then they go to Norm. They go, uh, Norm, I swear on my life. I'm not even going to exaggerate this. All my children's lives. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to get fired. And the, and the reporter goes, Norm, um, 
since everyone knows that Saturday Night Live is just a, a big frat party and, and uh, more like a, a college firm. Now, all these new cast members, what kind of practical jokes do you have lined up for them? Can you share with us the press, like the type of practical jokes you're going to show this new cast since you and Tim Meadows and uh, David are the, uh, I love you know, the young, senior yeah. guys here? And I swear to God, the first thing I thought of went, I, I was heartbroken because I went, I'm going to miss the practical jokes. I'm going to be fired before the first episode. I'm going to miss the fucking jokes. And Norm goes, practical jokes? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to anally rape them. Yeah, we're going to like, hey, hey, welcome to the show. This is what we do. Anal rape. That's your ring back in there. Oh, God. <laughs> I guess maybe my job's still going to be all right because this guy just went, he went to, I, did he just fucking go there? And he's like, yeah, we're going to fuck him. I'm like, hey, we're going to be sure. So afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I swear to God. And, no, you know, people are dying laughing. Like, you can't say that. Like, wait, this is the press. You can't say that. And so we're in the hallway where the craft table is, and I walk up to him, you know, like a new worker, and I'm a tray. I'm like, you know, I'm like, aren't, aren't you aren't, aren't you afraid of getting fired? And let me tell you something, bro. They don't give a fuck. He's got a fucking, he's fucking be funny. He's fucking reporter shit, dummy shit. And if they tell you to do things, you just tell him to go fuck himself. They don't give a shit. Press is press. <laughs> oh, and then he goes, wow. like, <laughs> he pulls the new cast, right? And he goes, <laughs> I just remember this. He goes, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, hey guys, I just want to let you know. He goes, don't, <laughs> he goes, don't put me in any of your gay sketches. <laughs> don't, don't try to write me in any of your gay sketches. I, I do fucking update. If I want to do a sketch, I'll fucking write. Just don't put me in any of your Gay sketches. Uh, you guys got that? <laughs> and I tell you what, you know my favorite time was with Norm? What? We play, we would play, I'm a 12 year old, Roseanne. We would play mm -hmm. Nerf football in the hallway where, uh, uh -huh. where, um, you come off the elevators. I saw all those guys playing their football. Yeah, so we, we played for this. It was, that, me, yeah. it was me, I think, and Colin Quinn against oh, Norm. I love him, too. I haven't seen him for a while. I see him wonderful, Roseanne. <laughs> he is so yeah. great. I love him. So, <laughs> He's great. So it's Colin and me against Norm and the uh, the the desk kid, the kid at the fucking desk, the intern. You know, Norm is like, hey, we got a fucking plane. You fucking Jason, what's your name? <laughs> no one's fucking gone three in the way. You fucking playing fucking ball with me and Brewery. Fucking Quinn. Let's go. You guys get on that fucking side. You fucking, we're playing for $40, right? So. <laughs> 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 so this is three in the morning with fucking play. And uh he's cheating. <laughs> he's cheating. We're supposed to be writing a sketch. He's fucking cheating. He's holding my arm. It's pissing me off. Every time I go to catch the board, it's pissing me off. Yeah, it's another fucking drop ball, my bureau. Our ball, our fucking ball. Well, I grew up a Long Island kid on the street, so now I'm getting fucking pissed. So now he catches the ball, he starts running. Ask him how hard I did this. I had boots on, and as he started running, I fucking kicked him so hard in the back of his calf. 
I'll never forget. He went, hey, Jesus Christ, fucking bro, what the fuck? Jesus Christ, bro, you fucking kick me in a goddamn shin? Because I fucking <laughs> caught the ball? Jesus Christ, you're fucking kicking the sh- calf. I can't. <laughs> 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 those beat those beat any live sketches I was ever on my whole life. I swear to God. Those moments kicking Norm hard in the calf. What are you doing now? Huh? Besides the fist bit, what are you doing now? Besides stand up and podcasts and all that? Are you what are you doing? I just do stand up. You know, yeah. Really- Isn't it the best? It's the fucking best. I do every Tuesday night. I drive to Jersey. Uh, I work out every Tuesday night. Um, I film it. Once Mm -hmm. in a while, put a clip out there. I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little... little, I'm not... I was a little afraid, but I I say it live. But now they film it. I'm like, just put it out. I couldn't believe the little things I would put out. Because I don't... I hate being labeled. Yeah. I hate being labeled. Mm -hmm. I just want people to think. I'm going to put put this right in front of you. I'm going to make it look so silly. If you want to say, oh, he clearly is a Trump guy. If he's fucking, if he's talking about that, or he's definitely a that, that, that's on you. If that's where he falls into, well, then yeah. maybe you should look into that. Um, but it's my only freedom. Every Tuesday yep, night, I go there, and I you know what's the most refreshing part? What? Usually the first 10, 15 minutes, I try not to be angry. I'm not, a, I'm not an angry, but I try <laughs> not to be angry. <laughs> How hard is that? Well, during, 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 I will say this. <laughs> the, first two time, the first two times I went up, which probably started about 10, 11 weeks ago. I was disappointed in my first 20 minutes, even though I got out what I wanted to get out. I felt I was a little too much of. If mm-hmm. I could have said, "Are you fucking stupid?" I would. And <laughs> yeah, if I, if I feel I that way too. When I said, "Wake up," uh, I would have. But I feel the, that the way. Key, the key, the gift that God gave me, and the great spirits gave me, was get that message across. But be kinder with it, Jim. Be I know exactly what you mean. Oh, hell yes, I know what you mean. Mm-hmm. So once I got the rhythm of how to be kind with it, it's been, but the beginning was a little tough for me. So, but now I'm liking, and here's the best part I was going to say. It's 99.9%. That's cool. Knows exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. They're not political. Mm -hmm. And I point them out. Mm -hmm. I literally go, okay, let's just, uh, goofy, we'll go mask, lockdowns. If you think, Mm -hmm. if you think X, Y, and Z makes sense, and then what I always do, I go, by the way, if they don't look for the people right now with the scrunched faces, and looking at their phone with the folded arms and the whole room starts doing it. I said, there's only like two of them in here. And then the whole, and I make it, I, I put it in a manner where I go, we're trying to help you. And if you notice, yeah. we're the majority. And then I tell the majority oh, yeah. and they are a majority. Like they're laughing so hard because it's a relief because they're going, we're not crazy. We're mm-hmm. not no, you're not crazy. And when they release, that's what laughter is. 
you you say something that someone relates to therefore they go oh my god it's not just us it's not just us you roseanne says the same thing that we feel Jimison. and that's why they're going ah, 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 ah. and i point exactly comedy comedy is the safety valve for the whole friggin' culture and, right and i and 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 i'd say it i've been saying it every show i said don't be afraid to be the majority because you yeah, are. Yeah, no shit. Woo yeah, no kidding. Oh, shit, I any fucking the whole freaking concert from last week because I said that loud oh, and clear. That needs to be heard. People want to hear that. They, they know nothing don't make any damn sense. Listen, Hell yeah, they know born, that. We're all born with an instinct. We're all born, and then yeah. it's ripped out of you. It's deprogrammed, and you, it's mm -hmm. it's just from the minute you go to school, it's taken out of you. Here, look at the pamphlet. Yeah. Here, look at the television. Here, yeah. read this magazine. Here, tell, watch this phone. Look at all the goodies on the phone. You're deprogrammed your whole life. Your whole life. Yeah, I think it's and, like here, eat this clump of bullshit, and it, and tell yourself it tastes like chocolate. Keep on eating it. Eat it with both hands. Eat a yard fucking full of it with both hands. And I'm telling you what, it's the most delicious chocolate you've ever had. You go, hey, this tastes like shit. No, something's wrong with your taste buds. That's a delicious <laughs> chocolate you're eating. Right? It makes me want. sick. It's all bullshit. But People are addicted to it, too. They're addicted to bullshit. They'd rather have their bullshit than fucking, you know, their, their own fucking life. Well... You I can't, can't stand under, it. You can't you can't underestimate the addiction. It's 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 a system where you're built to be addicted nonstop. You're built to be addicted to uh vanity and things Cigarettes. and you're 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 addicted to uh be self righteous. You're you're addicted yeah, no to shit. being programmed and checking uh the Twitter and uh, and and I it's it's an addiction. It's no it different than heroin. No different. It ain't no different. I, I, I tell people, try. That you, you're on there going, all oh, these people that I admire, I still agree with them. Oh, good, they're still validating what I don't really believe. Oh, good, I'm still in the, I'm still coming up aces because they're still saying the shit I pretend to believe. Yeah, it's just all crazy shit. Like, God, I, take a fucking break, people. Take a fucking break, you stupid so fucking where do you retard. Think? Well, let me ask you this. I keep doing this. I can't figure this out. So I can't either. Yeah. Well, now you're only half in. Well, let me ask you this. What? Where do you see it going? Oh, it's going so damn good. It's going to be so great. I see nothing but uh, fireworks, picnics, happy families, neighbors uh, dancing in the street. It's going to be the happiest fucking it's going to be the biggest happiest thing that anybody's ever seen all we got to do is get through these next few weeks together and the, and don't put any hate out there just put all love out there think positive it's all getting fixed you don't see it but it's all happening god's in control you got to believe god's doing what god's doing and he don't care about the plans of the idiots he's in charge and uh, you know, just keep your head low and your mouth shut for this little time. <laughs> That's what I think. It's all gonna be great. I gotta be honest with you. Uh, what? I'm right there with you. And Are I keep you? telling everyone. I keep telling cool. everyone. You know, I go to this. I go to this coffee shop every morning. It's just we built this little community of, of just real people. You know, and they'll come in like, hey, see what's going on. And I, listen, I, I tell them, I said, listen, the month of December, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just turn it all off. Mm -hmm. It'll come to an end mm -hmm. and it's going to be a happy ending. It is a There's real so happy much ending. more. There's so much more behind the scenes than mm -hmm. you will ever imagine. Don't even try That's to right. imagine it just trust mm -hmm. everyone feels yeah. the weirdness just like yoda in star wars goes uh there's a disturbance in the force he just feels it right now mm -hmm. 
Yeah. There's a disturb. Mm hmm. Ever. Yep. It's going Enough. to. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And I know you feel that way, mm -hmm. probably for the same reasons I do. I just see it all. I've seen it all. Uh, yeah, I saw it all on stage. Uh, I went across the country and up to Canada, and I saw it from its infancy, being on one side and seeing it switch, seeing the, the whole consciousness switch over the last three years. And, uh, you know, by who's he who here is, thinks this, who I always take the, you know, questions and say, who thinks this, who's for that? And I seen it all switch across the country and Canada, the change of mind, the change of heart. I seen it all. And it, it was just glorious because I was, you know, wondering if I was still in touch with, you know, the, uh, what do they call it? The zeitgeist, you know, that comics are in touch with. And uh, by God, I was, and I saw it all. And I'm so happy because I knew that it was, people want to uh, improve. People want improvement. So we're going to get it. You know what? I believe that too. And I, and I have to say, I feel like, um, there was a part of me for the longest time. I was so scared to be, to put out more of my feelings, my spirituality, my, uh, just morals, my faith, and tell some stories that I know are so much deeper based yeah. on, you know, yeah, I go to church or whatever. During this time, it's probably been, you know, I've, I've been hiking nonstop alone. And sometimes I'll just sit for an hour, two hours alone in a gazebo and it's the most it's it's like taking a shower and you get these and you you get the you get answers yeah you're you not do. like sometimes you don't like them or you get direction of going you know you should do this and maybe you should yeah. start watching this one a little bit more and why you give this one a call because i think they need to hear from you like wow i was here because you're cluttered and that opens it but i think a lot of people mm -hmm. are being pushed in a deeper, not only are they being pushed, I'm starting to notice anyone that has zero, I, I'll use the word faith, meaning you believe more than just we live, uh, we die, and uh, you know, we came from a frog, and then you know, it's just there's that and that 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 becomes you're losing your I'm not going to criticize it but there's that and then the others are going uh yeah no I'm I'm going with the god thing right now and I'm going mm -hmm. with something deeper and I'm going with the uh, in, in the community that we that we created had it be I've been waiting for it my whole life. I can say the last cool. six months, the last six months has been better than most stretches of any career I ever wanted. And what I mean by that is, you know, we started hanging out as a community, as a bunch of it, because no one was That's working. what I think is coming, is that community by choice. I think that's yes. coming. And, yes. uh, you know, you're going you're gonna to attract and want to live with people who think like you not so much people who look like you. I think that's going away. And people who think and feel like you is coming. Those communities by choice. I see it here in Hawaii, you know, and uh, like-mindedness is what, what it is. And uh, I think that that's going to be re the result of this whole lockdown where we're forced to go have introspect, self-introspection. Uh, most of us have, you know, a lot of us have lived a long time without that rushing around chasing after paying them bills and stuff that 
when we're forced to be here with ourselves and our horrible families. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have that to settle stuff and clean it up. You know, we have to clean up the shit that we've ignored forever. And it's a good, good thing, you know, got to look at, look at that. You know, I think we're doing the work that we've been putting off for a long time. So I think it's going to have a good payoff for all of us. I do too. And I'm glad. I, I see I, it. I see it everywhere. And people are way nicer, you know, uh, they're getting, they're turning out way nicer. And even, you know, even, even you just feel it. The people have more spirit. They're not so crushed down because they know they can do without a lot of things that they didn't think they could do without. So they're stronger. You know, that's what I think. I see it, you know. Cause I'm always yes. like going out there like you. I'm always like, ah, oh, what now? What am I gonna make fun of? You know, what <laughs> bullshit am I gonna make fun of and crush and pop? But uh, it's something different now. It's it's not so much hypocrisy and uh, that shit that we always love to make fun of. But now it's like, wait a minute, we're gonna turn this this gaze and this uh, pointer finger. It's gonna start pointing up, not down. And I think that's a big, big good. We're going to go right to the top of who's at the top of this shit and causing it, not to how people are reacting to it, but who's the cause. I think that's a big evolutionary step for us. You know, I think it's good. It is good. And I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad you see that because I see it coming. I see it coming as well. And you're not, you don't have a choice. No, you got no choice. That's what's even better. There's no choice. It's either evolve, motherfuckers. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You want to get on the loot? Get on the raft. It comes here. Go over there. You can walk down the railing. Just get on. Just start floating down the river. Trust me. Just trust me. Yeah, I feel the well, same. Well, I think we should put an end to this, and I think we should do it again because I like talking to you about uh, parenting and all this other stuff, but I'm old and I got to go back to bed. I've been up for like 16 hours. Well, I got to go back and, and this was, uh, I know you're tired was, too. This was quite an honor and I can't thank you enough. And it's uh, great to finally meet you. And you got it's a nice great to family. meet you too. Great I family. do. I'm so lucky. That's my uh, pride and joy. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So thank you. Uh, and we'll catch up again. Yeah, let's enjoy do it again. Hawaii. Thank How you. How you doing, Roseanne? Love you. Love you too, my love. That was awesome, you guys. Thank you, Jim. We're, we're, oh, oh, we're still going. We're done.